Hey guys, uh, Tom here, and uh, in this video I'm going to go through uh, Nikon's software that comes with the DSLR camera uh, when you buy it. I've had a few requests for this. Um, it's very basic software, but obviously it's free, it comes with the camera, so it's a good thing to sort of get you going, to get started. Um, it's called View NX, and there's another version which is actually a paid version called Capture NX, um, which is a mo uh, sort of a lot more sophisticated, but obviously that it's uh, a lot of money to splash out extra. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go through the features on ViewNX, um, how to import your images, how to edit them, and how to export them. So we'll go over to the computer now and we'll have a look at the software. Okay, so on here we have um, ViewNX loaded up. Um, when you first load it, uh, you'll be greeted with an empty pane here. Um, you've actually got to import your images to this. Um, the way that you would do that is you'd come up with this box here which has got all your folders and then you simply just go to the folder that you want and um, that's got your images in it. Um, click on the folder and then it will come up uh, with the pictures in here. Um, to get rid of this bar you can just click this arrow here and that will make it go away and uh, you can lock it in with that arrow there. At the top here you've got several icons that will do different things. Um, browser takes you back to this page um, to find your images. Um, Geotag, um, if you've shot with a GPS um, enabled camera that will load up the GPS data and show you on the map where you've taken it. Um, edit is obviously the edit section of the images, we'll get to that in a second. Transfer, you can import your files directly from your camera using this. Uh, it's got a built-in movie editor. I haven't used that yet, so I don't know uh, how good that is. Um, I'll do another video on that, I expect, at some point. Um, focus point, that's a quite a good little um, thing there. If we go back into the browser and click off it and click on it, it actually shows you where you focused. Um, so this is really good when you're practicing different focus techniques. You can actually see exactly where the camera focused. Um, there's a few quick edit options up here, just rotating and then you've got your um, print email and all this kind of thing up here. You can make the images thumbnails bigger or smaller using this here. And there's several options here as well for different um, ways of displaying the images and several other options here for changing folders and such. So we'll get into the main part that I want to talk about which is the editing uh, features. So I'm just going to select this middle picture here, you can see it sort of goes grey. And then come up to the edit button up here and this brings up uh, the edit pane. Uh, first thing you'll probably see is you've got several different uh, new buttons come up here. And um, This is the file name uh, this here, if you've shot in RAW, um, this will show you the RAW preview, or you can turn it off to get the JPEG preview. This bit here is all the data, the metadata from your camera, the date, the time, the camera, the lens, the image size, the image file size, um, the focal length, and the ISO and everything else. You can turn that off if it's in the way using this um, eye icon up here. Um, this button here is your histograms. Um, if you're not into histograms at the moment, I suggest you really learn how to use them. They're a really good tool to get your exposures dead on. Um, maybe I'll do another video separately on histograms, but there's plenty of other videos on YouTube and uh, websites that you can sort of really get to grips with that. Um, there's different options here for RGB histograms and brightness and everything. I'm just going to turn them all off for now. Um, this one here lets you zoom in. You can go in sort of a little bit, that's full size, or you can zoom uh, right into four times. And then over here we get into the actual main editing adjustments. At the top here you've got a box that says all or quick. Quick just means there's really basic options just really quickly um, going through your photos and all gives you a few more options to choose from. I'm going to stick with all and I'll just briefly go through um, all the different 
uh, sliders and tell you what they do. Okay, so the first one I'm going to start with is actually this one, picture control. Um, if you're shooting in RAW, usually when you take a picture and edit it in, say, Lightroom, um, Lightroom does not apply any of these picture controls that you've got set in the camera. So when you load the image into Lightroom, the picture is going to look a lot more flat. I can demonstrate that now. If I go into Lightroom and I load up this uh, same image, I think it's that one. And if I reset this back to default, you can see that that's the raw image with no processing applied whatsoever. So that's basically how it came straight out the camera. And you can see the one in View NX actually looks edited already even though I've not even touched it yet and that is because it's got this picture style, picture control already uh, loaded onto it from the camera because my camera at the time was set uh, in vivid mode now um, you can't turn these off in the camera, it has to be set to one of them but when you shoot in RAW usually it's ignored um, but in this program it actually applies them straight away to get sort of the closest you can to raw neutral is probably the best to start with. Um, of course, you can just pick any of these you want. You can just go through them and just see what they look like, and you might find that you're happy just using one of these, and you don't even need to touch any of the sliders at all. Um, so, but for now, I'm just going to stick it in neutral so I can just show you better um, how these different sliders uh, sort of change this image. Okay, so the first one up here is exposure compensation. Um, it basically adjusts the exposure, but it doesn't adjust it as much as what Lightroom does with that exposure. You've only got minus two to up to two stops of um, exposure compensation there. So you don't get as much leeway as you do in Lightroom, but it's usually enough just to sort of bring out the image if you've underexposed or overexposed slightly. You can just tweak it a little bit. And this image, I uh, will just boost that up a little bit, maybe half a stop. Again, white balance, you have got loads of different options here. If you've shot your camera in a certain white balance setting, it will automatically load it when you load the image. Uh, I leave my camera on auto, um, but you can adjust this to any of the standard white balances um, that you'd usually use. You can use a custom white balance, um, you can use a grey point sample, you can sort of press start there and you can pick a neutral grey and get the white balance that way. Or you can calculate it automatically, which is basically just auto white balance again. I'm just going to leave it how the camera saw it, but you can also fine adjust it in any of these other um, settings using the sliders. If you want to warm it up a bit, you can do that or um, cool it down. But I'll just leave it in auto for now. Sharpness. Um, obviously this is sharpness. Um, be very careful with this slider. I found just using the software for today, it's very harsh, the sharpness control in uh, View NX. Um, Lightroom is a much sort of softer sharpening. Um, if we just zoom in to full size here, this is with no sharpening at all. Now if I just move it up to 1 and then 2, you can see the image starts to sharpen, but it's very easy to take it too far. Um, as you get higher, you can see it really starts to make the image look not very nice at all. So just be careful with this. Make sure you zoom in full size onto uh, this X1 there. Just add a little bit of sharpening. Probably I probably won't go any higher than 6. Uh, I'm going to stick at 4. Um, I might come back to that in a minute and change it once I've finished the other um, settings, but we'll leave it on four for now. Contrast, obviously you can reduce the contrast. It kind of washes the image out. Um, you probably won't use that very often, only sort of very occasionally. And you can really go overboard with the contrast. Obviously that looks awful. So I'm just going to bring it down a bit. Just see probably about there I'd say for now. Brightness obviously affects the overall brightness of the scene. Uh, 
I'm happy at naught on that. Highlight protection. Now this is a nice little slider to use. Um, you can see in this image up here, um, the top of my dog's head, you can see the image is actually blown out. And if we come back to the histogram, onto the uh, brightness histogram, you can actually see this peak here right on this far side is that is causing it. It's actually blown the highlight. Now I won't be able to get all that back because it is actually completely gone. But by using that slider, it just tones it down a little bit. You can see there. And it also brings back some of the detail in this fur down here as well. You also notice as I slide that, if you keep an eye on um, the histogram here, you can see that peak goes from there and it gets less. So that kind of reduces some of these highlight areas and brings a bit more detail back into them. Shadow protection is the same thing except in reverse for the shadows. And if I, um, you can actually boost the shadows up by quite a lot. Again, if we look at the histogram, the shadows is this area on the left hand side. You see I've got a tiny bit of shadow clipping here, so I can just get rid of that, get that histogram looking good, like that. So highlight protection just brings down the highlights and shadow protection brings up the shadows. Delighting HS um, is, is a Nikon specific slider, um, in the cameras you have active delighting. This is basically doing what that does. Um, it's kind of a mixture of these two together. Um, it brings up the shadows and also lowers the highlights at the same time. Um, but it doesn't do a particularly great job on this image. And that's just something you can play around with, uh, experiment with. I'm just going to leave it on naught for now. Here we have Color Booster. And you see you've got People and Nature. Basically this is just saturation. You can see as I slide it up there, these greens start to really go mental, and also the yellow and the brown over here start to go crazy. Um, the difference between people and nature, that's on people, that's on nature, it's just different colour tones that it changes. If you go too far, as you can see it starts to look awful, so just, again, just play around with it and just get those colours how you want. Uh, I think I might stick on naught or close to not, I might bring those greens up a little bit to about there I think, so colour booster is basically just saturation you can't control the different colours like you could in Lightroom in Lightroom you can control the green, you can control the blue and the red and everything else this is just an overall all-in-one uh, saturation boost crop, you've got loads of different crops here um, take the pick, whatever you want, or just leave it as it is Straighten, this is quite a neat little function. Um, if you've taken a horizon and it's got a bit wonky, instead of cropping it like you would normally, you can just use this slider and it will sort of twist the image around. It does crop part of the image off, um, but it'll save that wonky horizon. Just leave that on naught. Auto red eye, obviously, if you've been using flash, the on camera flash, um, you can get red eye in people's eyes, so you can automatically. Uh, get rid of that. I didn't use flash on this, so I'll get rid of that. Axial colour aberration. This gets rid of your chromatic aberrations. Uh, I don't think there actually are any in this picture to show you, but um, aberrations are often um, sort of purple or blue fringing around the very edges of uh, certain straight lines and curved lines. Um, so this one and this one here will get rid of that pretty much for you, and you can adjust the strength of that as well. Um, I don't have an image with any on to show you, I don't think, so I can't really demonstrate that. Um, but if you see when you're zoomed in, sort of purpley fringing on uh, straight edges, then that should get rid of it. That's actually it in the editing bar. Um, one thing I was surprised to see is there's no noise reduction at all, um, which is strange. Um, this image isn't too bad for noise, um, but I did play around with some other images earlier and there's no noise reduction to sort it out which is just bizarre uh, I don't know why that is um, I guess they expect you to sort of pay up and buy um, Capture NX to benefit noise reduction 
Um, so that's something to beware if you're only using this software and you shoot at higher ISOs. Um, you're not going to get the noise reduction. Um, this pane here is the metadata. Um, you've got several different options again here. This is just all the detail that the camera has gathered. Um, all different sections on your camera, your lens, the exposure. Um, if you use flash, the image settings picture control that you use, GPS if you've got GPS and this section here you can label your pictures and um, you can either do it using color labels or you can do it star ratings if you've got an amazing photo you can label it five stars if you've got a rubbish one one star. You can add in keywords um, if you're taking a lot of photos and you're sort of cataloging them this isn't you should really keyword your images it makes it so much easier trying to find stuff further down the line and um, there's been several times uh, recently someone's asked me for a specific photo from sort of three years ago and how I, I didn't keyword back then and it takes me an absolute age trying to find the photo I've got to sort of rack my memory when did I take it what sort of date was it where was I what camera did I use um, if I had just keyworded it at the start I could have put um, example this is my dog so I could have put dog his name's Seb I could have put Seb I could have put the garden if I could type it was in my garden. Um, I could even put in the month but I don't need to so much because it's already in the metadata. I can add those keywords and they will stay with this image forever. Also if you upload this image to somewhere like Flickr or to Photo Bucket these tags will stay with it so that will also automatically go in there. You can also add a description so I could put dog in garden that will stay with the image forever. Um, you can add different events, titles, you can add your own copyright notice, you can add all your contact information and you can add all this other stuff which is really useful if you're selling images uh, especially to stock agencies and the like. It's got all your contact information in there already so if they find this image they think oh I want to buy that they can get in contact with you and arrange that with you. Again you don't need to fill this out but it's a good practice to sort of get into the habit of doing it. Uh, you've also got different categories, so I could create different categories like dog or garden or animals or anything like that. You can also save um, all these different settings that you've put in and save it as a preset. And you can just save them down there and you can reset all the settings back to default with the reset button down there. Okay, so now we've edited the image and you want to export this to a JPEG file or to a TIFF file. Now when you first look at this program there's no obvious way of doing that. Um, you go into the file menu, you've got save as and you've got save. You can do it that way but you'll see all files that only let me save it back as a NEF uh, which is the raw file which I don't want to do because that will overwrite this one. So what you have to do is come up to here which is convert files uh, the image has been edited. Do I want to save it? Yes, I do. And here we've got TIFF, 16-bit, uh, 8-bit uh, bit or JPEG. It tells you the size of the image. You can adjust the quality. I'll leave it as full quality. You can change the image size. You can remove all the settings that we just put in, all these keywords and everything if you want to. Uh, choose where you want to save it and all these other options. I'm just going to stick mine on the desktop just so I can find it. Click convert and that would have then converted this raw file into a JPEG which should now be on my desktop which it is just there. So there's that file that we just edited. Okay so that's a really brief overview of View NX2. Um, I haven't used this software for a long time because it was very basic. I did use Capture NX2 for a little while, um, but I just really didn't get on with it. I much preferred Lightroom, and I would highly advise to look into Lightroom. You can get a 30-day free trial of it on the Adobe website. So download that and have a play with it, and if you like it, save up or sell something or whatever and buy Lightroom because it's much more feature-packed than this. It does so much more. It's much easier to control, it's much easier to find your way around, it catalogues better, um, 
it does everything better to be honest um this is a free piece of software so it's developed cheap um it comes with all the cameras as standard and it's just not great to be honest so um for about 100 pounds i think lightroom is now i'm not sure so i upgraded i didn't spend the full cost it's really worth it it's a lot better than this and it's a lot better than capture nx2 as well okay i hope that was helpful if you've got any questions on this or anything else and just leave a comment in the box below or send me an email and you can reach me at tom at photoix.co.uk you can follow me on twitter and you can visit the website www.photoix.co.uk and thanks very much